Welcome to Stay Home, Stay Focused. I'm Jack Moline. I am president of Interfaith Alliance. My very special guest today is my friend, my teacher, my colleague, and my predecessor, Reverend C. Welton Gaddy of Monroe, Louisiana, who, in addition to being the senior scholar and president emeritus of Interfaith Alliance, is the host of our weekly radio program and podcast, State of Belief. That's used up about 15 of our 20 minutes, Welton, just introducing you there. <laughs> oh, Jack, great to see you. You too, you too. And Welton, for those of you who have been following us for the past uh, almost 50 episodes, uh, we'll remember that Welton was my first guest back in March when we started this series, and today he is my ultimate guest because this is the end of the daily broadcast of these uh, of these conversations, although we won't abandon you entirely. So let me begin with you again, Welton, where I began with you uh, almost two months ago. How are you? I'm doing well, uh, physically, uh, mentally. I... Um... I think I'm still uh, thinking straight, but uh, since that seems to be out of step a little bit, I try to go every day and see if I still have my sanity about me. Good, and how's that working out? Uh, well, on one day, it's, it's an one, and on another, another. There you um, go. I, I do want to say to you, Jack, uh, before I say anything else, uh, I want to congratulate you for what you have done uh, on this show and also uh, thank you for helping our listening audience uh, wherever it is. And in fact, a listening nation, uh, you have shown us that there can be uh, reasonable kinds of conversation about subjects that sometimes are very difficult for us to talk about. And you have done that in such a way that there also have been moments, uh, not just of information, uh, but moments of inspiration as well. And uh, I really thank you for doing that. Thank you, Welton. I really appreciate it. We tried very hard to get uh, as much as a balance, uh, much of a balance as we could uh, while still promoting our agenda, which is our prerogative. After all, it's our webcast. So yeah. I'm glad to know that at some level we succeeded. Um, I, I want to start by asking you, um, what's different for you now uh, after 10 weeks of this quarantine? Well, I know for sure uh, that I'm not a person meant to stay at home. <laughs> uh, I am I am ready to get out and be doing some of the things that uh, I usually do. Um, I, I think that I am more worried about our nation than perhaps I've ever been. Uh, I've been. I've been scared before. I can remember the times I've been scared. Um, but this is not just fear. It is worry about whether or not we are on the same path that this nation has always tried to be on, even when it was struggling uh, to do that. And I, um, I, I worry as to whether or not the three components of our government are functioning. Um, and I say that because uh, at least the legislative uh, branch um, seems to be sometimes all right, other times cowardice. Um, and I think sometimes both houses uh, have left us in the lurch of wanting someone to step up with leadership uh, that makes us feel like we can get through this. And then the other two, the uh, other two branches, uh, I, am, I am totally uh, sorry for and worried about uh, because I don't think they're doing what their offices 
uh, are meant for them to be doing. There certainly has been a, an absence of leadership in this country. I can't even call it a failure because so few people who are in official positions have stepped up and tried to make things better. They've tried to make things more advantageous for themselves or their party or their cause, but there's no one speaking to the heart and soul of America right now. And that that's very distressing. Yeah. I, you know, you know, that's true. It's, it's true, Jack, e even for, for people who are in leadership positions and it's true, not only in the realm of uh, political affairs, it's also true in a, a lot of the religious uh, places in which there ought to be Absolutely. both prophetic stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, on uh, the last time I, I recorded one of these webcasts, um, the country was still uh, obsessed with the pandemic and not that we should not continue to be obsessed with the pandemic, but in the intervening few days that you and I are, are now having this conversation, uh, the country has descended into uh, confusion and uh, in some cases violence and certainly uh, expressions of racism uh, after uh, the events in Minneapolis. Uh, you and I have, have seen so much unrest around the issue of race. We, we both lived through 1968. Uh, you were in the South. I was in the Midwest, in Chicago in particular. Um, and we, we lived through the Los Angeles riots. We've lived through all sorts of, of various kinds of, uh, of public conflict over race. They've been similar in kind, if not always in cause. So, Welton, from the perspective of what you've seen, what do we as a nation need to do next? We need to take a hard look inside and outside at whether we really do believe in what our documents say we believe, because we're not acting that way. And we're seeing uh, failure, as I said, in, in all three uh, parts of our government, and no one seems to be really worried about that. We talk about it, but when I say I'm worried about it, I want to do something about yeah. it, and I don't see anybody uh, doing anything about it. I, I mean, I think either one of us, both of us, could uh, talk uh, for the rest of the day uh, about some failures in in the White House, right? But uh, but I tell you, it 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 really makes me so upset. We've gone through in in this pandemic, we have not had any real leadership. We have a hundred thousand people more than that now dead. And the president of the United States has not in that office said what a leader of our nation ought to be saying, at least about saying, I'm sorry for what's happening. Right. And we're not hearing that. And the same thing is happening now in the midst of all of this chaos related uh, to the, the, the race issue, because my gosh, we need leadership. We need leadership that someone believes in and, and we're not getting it. And, and you know, I, this may be a, a little uh, thing, but I kind of wish that in our public media uh, on TV, um, that they that the, that the stations were still using the right side of the video to tell us we're still losing people uh, mm -hmm. about the virus and we're still getting people with the virus every day and it's not to take away from what we're experiencing in what's going on at nighttime and what's going on uh, with, with hate haters. Um, I, 
we have both of those to deal with. And I don't want us to forget that there are two things going on, both of which are being made more difficult because of the lack of leadership in our nation. Some of that void of leadership can be filled locally. I mean, if we're not going to be inspired and fulfilled uh, by the president, we're going to have to be inspired and fulfilled despite the president. And a lot of that leadership needs to come from the faith community. What should we be hearing from faith leadership now? We should be hearing that as good citizens in the religious community, we are challenging those who aren't acting like their leaders and saying to them, if, if you're not going to do this, we are. We can't let this nation become more divided. We can't let we can't have lies as the foundation of making things better. And, and I'm not just talking about the White House. I'm, I'm talking about the fact that it, it has become in to lie. And unless we, I, I like to go back to uh, the song that we sing so much uh, as our national anthem, which says, oh, say, can you see? And I don't think people are seeing. So we need to be talking about those things, and we need to be talking about them, not in order to win our argument, but to help bring our people together so we can have at least, at least dialogues in which we are both trying to put ourselves together again and go on with this democracy. And if we don't do that, we're going to lose the nation and the democracy. You know, I had a conversation with a mutual friend of ours, and I won't name her because she's already upset enough about this. Uh, when, when the election was pending uh, in 20. 16 she and i came to honor you at your uh at your retirement from your from your pulpit and she was very concerned about what might happen to the nation in uh in the kind of administration that we have and i remember saying to her don't worry no matter what happens the republic will stand now, you've expressed what i feel welton is that i'm not quite so sure that if something doesn't change fast the republic will indeed stand we've already lost so much of our status around the world and, uh, and we are so divided as a nation that that, uh, that first famous Republican, uh, Abraham Lincoln's words are, are correct. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So uh, we, we got a lot to do. And, and speaking of we, because, uh, you know, you and I are a couple of old white guys talking about the problems in this nation. Um, but we both have an investment in an organization that's tried to do some good. So... What, what is next for Interfaith Alliance? We're, already, we're all wor already working on hate crimes legislation. We're already working on religious freedom in its truest sense. We're already working on uh, public education and keeping public dollars where they should be. What else should we as Interfaith Alliance be doing going forward? Well, you know, Interfaith is in our title. And I think we have responsibility to see to it that in the interfaith community, which has to be able uh, to work diligently and kindly with people who have no religion at all, without condemning them, saying, let's, let's put ourselves together. And if no one else is going to talk about the values that make this nation great, religion great. Let's talk about that and then do what we're talking about. Um, and and I'm, I'm more interested in us doing it than talking about it. Um, and I think Interfaith Alliance, 
I've, I've thought about it a lot because I know you're thinking a lot about it too. You know, the, what's been important for the Interfaith Alliance from, uh, from the very beginning are values that can change the direction of our nation. We, we talk about civility. We talk about honesty. We talk about cooperation. Uh, we talk about uh, being smart and being uh, people who think and think and try to think about what's best, not how to win something. Um, we need to talk about and demonstrate how religion ought to act like religion and politicians ought to act like uh, politicians. And um, to do that means that we're not into the business of partisanship. We're into the business of making this democracy strong and seeing to it that all of our people, not just whites, not just blacks, but all of us are into this thing together and we are meant to live together and work together and cooperate together. I see Interfaith Alliance as being someone who can wave those flags and call people to that kind of relationship. That, that, is, uh, that is important, it's great, it's wise, Welton, and none of which surprises me coming out of your mouth. People have been watching and listening to this webcast over the course of the past 10 weeks. Uh, almost 50 times, 20 minutes at a time. We know from the metrics that are provided to us by Facebook that we have touched people uh, over 60,000 times during that period of time. So I would plead with you, if you're one of those people who's, who's watching or listening to this, to, to heed what you've heard from, from my friend Welton. Every community should have an interfaith alliance in it. And we, in the, in the central office in Washington, D.C., stand ready to help you realize that opportunity. Gather half a dozen friends around you, get to work. We'll give you the resources that you need to get this going. Um, and, and that's what's going to lift this voice that so many of you have been exposed to over the course of the past uh, 10 weeks and over the course of so many remarkable people. I, well, and I, I don't know if, if you've been watching every day, and I, I won't ask you to answer because then I'd have to answer whether I listen to State of Belief every <laughs> single week. But um, we've had, uh, we've had uh, 18 of our allies represented in these programs. We've had eight people who are authors or otherwise in the media. We've had uh, three people who are in different kinds of service in chaplaincy and funeral direction. We've had seven politicians from both parties. We've had eight faith leaders who've come on only in their capacity as faith leaders. And four of my uh, stellar staff members from Interfaith Alliance, not including the two of us in, in these conversations. That's a good uh, recognition of the comprehensiveness of what we're hoping to accomplish in this world. And uh, the work- They've had Jack Mosley. And Jack Moline had Welton Gaddy. I mean, we'll, we can sit here trading compliments back and forth. But after 25 years, uh, we, are, we are prepared to step into what needs to be here. So I, I, it, it is unfortunately time for us to sign off. I will assure everybody that Welton and I have these conversations all the time. We just invited you into this one uh, today. But I've been asking you at the end of each program to stay home and stay focused. Today, I want to ask you in face of the twin challenges that we have in this nation today, that when it comes to COVID-19, be reticent. Stay home as much as you can. Keep away from people who might infect you and whom you might unwittingly infect. But when it comes to fighting racism in this country, I ask you to be anything but reticent. In fact, I ask you to be bold, be strong and of good courage, and of course, stay home. Stay focused.